Okay, so in this video clip, I'm going to take a look at how we might uh, set out a binomial tree for futures. Uh, this is material is based on John C. Hull's book. I'll just get a reference. Okay, so uh, this book here, Option, Futures, Other Derivatives, and I think there's a 10th edition of uh, that textbook. So if I go back into looking then at this binomial um, uh, construction, uh, binomial models are something I've addressed before for spot price, but here uh, the underlying is a futures. And the futures, in many respects, follows the price movement of the futures. It's got to be related to the underlying value of the spot price. However, with a futures contract, uh, when you set up the initial position, the uh, the cash outlay is generally uh, limited to the amount of margin you're putting into a margin account and that's based on a given exchange's practice. So if there's a futures exchange, when you enter into the futures position initially, the value, the, the amount of money, the initial cash outlay is not equivalent to the futures price. Rather, it's an amount that you will put in in terms of a margin and then there's an adjustment on the margin so subsequent cash flows are actually captured by the change in the amount of money in the margin account if we assume for a moment that the initial margin was just another deposit account then change is going from one time period to the next in terms of either cash outflow or cash inflow are captured by uh, the change in the margin position okay so let's just set it out here we we initially going to say that we've a one month call option on a futures has a strike price of 29 okay so it's a call option it expires in one month a strike price of 29 the initial futures price is 30 we're looking to find the value of the call option if the if we re if we restrict and again this is slightly artificial if we restrict the value of the futures going from either going from 30 up to 33 or 30 down to 28 then the value in terms of uh, the option okay is if the exercise was 29 then 33 minus 29 would be a difference of four if the futures price went to 28 then uh, with the call position that would be 28 minus the strike of 29 that would be a negative the number minus one the value of a call can never be negative it's always got to be the positive region and so the option price would then be zero as a consequence okay so that's our initial starting point and it follows pretty much closely along what we saw before with a cox ross rubenstein tree okay so uh, if then we set up a riskless portfolio riskless portfolio um again this is an idea borrowed from uh, the um, black shoals construction that risk neutrality can be preserved by taking position in the option and taking a position in the underlying here the option is to call so uh, we're taking if you like where we have a short call position and we're long the futures. We're long delta times the futures. Okay, so where delta is the delta position that we have to solve for. Okay, so if the if the option if the futures price goes from thirty to thirty three, uh, in the previous instance where we looked at the spot price, then we would have had 33 delta minus 4. But here, because it's the futures, then it's the change in the margin position. And so if we start off with the futures price going from 30 to 33, that's again a 3. So the cash inflow into the margin account is positive 3. So we have th uh, the position in the futures then is delta times that 3 minus the four where's the four coming from it's a short position in the call and we said the value of the call if the stock price goes up or if the futures price goes up is four value of the call if the futures price goes down to 28 where the strike price is 29 the option would be zero 
Okay, so we have, if you like, what this represents is a portfolio. It's a riskless portfolio. Why is it a riskless portfolio? Because we're saying we take a position in the futures, long position in the futures, short position in the call option. If the price goes from 30 to 33 for the futures, the margin the position gained in terms of the margin account is 3. So we've delta some, the delta here represents some fraction of our, <clears throat> our position is determined by delta, how much of the de delta, how much of a fraction of the overall position should we acquire. And we have a short position in the option, in the call option. Okay, so if the futures price goes down, the futures, the margin loss then is minus two, we've minus two times delta. And we also would have minus zero, but we can, because it's a negative zero, then we can ignore that. Then what's the delta position? Under what circumstances are these two outcomes equivalent? Right. And the reason why we try to establish equivalence is because we're saying we want the portfolio to be absolutely riskless. And if the, if the two equate to each other, if these two outcomes are equal equal to each other then it means we've removed all the uncertainty we've removed all the risk so we have 3 delta minus 4 is equal to negative 2 times delta then when we solve for 0 0.8 what delta here would make this equal to this well 3 times 0 0.8 is 2.4 minus 4 is 1.6 or minus 2 times 0 0.8 is minus 1.6. So when we substitute 0 0.8 into the delta here and here, we get negative 1.6 both sides. Okay, so in that instance then, if we have negative 1.6 or negative 1.6, then to express the value of that in present value terms, we must discount the negative 1.6 by the risk-free rate and because it's one month, well, it's one over 12. So uh, again, we had, I didn't know previously that the interest rate was 0 0.06. So we're just imposing that here now. We're saying that the risk free rate is 0 0.06. We can discount if the risk free rate is 6%. We, we can discount at the 6% because we made the portfolio risk neutral. Okay using this delta hedging approach. So if we discount at the 6% for the one month, then that equates to negative 1.592. And that implies then, well, how much of our position, how much of our, of, uh, our initial position so if we, if we think we come back here, there's a delta position in the futures minus the value of the call. What we're trying to figure out is the value of the option or the value of the call. Okay, now the initial value of the futures, if we discount this 1.6 back and it's 1.592, then that's the value of the option here, 1. The value of the portfolio here is that negative 1.592, discounting the negative 1.6 back in time. So negative 1.6, but that value is equivalent to the portfolio of delta times the futures minus, because it's a short, minus the call. Uh, the interesting feature here is that the futures value, the value of the futures contract at uh, the initial time period has got to be zero. All futures contracts, their value must be equal to zero the moment the futures contract is set up. So at the initial date of the futures contract, it must be fair game. If it's a fair game, then its value is zero. Because it's zero, it means then the, if the value of the portfolio is 1.6 and the futures contract is zero, then that 
one point that one point six discounted being equal to one point five nine two if that's the value of the portfolio if the futures contract is zero then the value of the call is one point five nine two now remember it's a negative call is equal to negative one point five nine two so the value of the call option must therefore be one point five nine two okay so that's a summary of an example that's provided in hull it's very illuminating because then that allows us to set out a generalization of the futures right and why we're keen on that is because we want to actually just demonstrate this that in the same way when we looked at the binomial model for the spot price we had the uh, the uh, recursive uh, discounting that takes place in the tree when we look at the value of the option its value is determined by the value of the option if the futures price goes up the value of the option if the futures price goes down and we discount using risk neutral probabilities and the risk free rate okay and when we uh, had this structure for the spot price then we had this uh, f was equal to this same as before but here we have the risk neutral probability is equal to 1 minus d over uh, u minus d okay so when we implemented the binomial tree for uh, where the underlying was the spot price not the futures price we didn't have this as the risk neutral probability in fact the risk neutral probability in an example we had given before was equal to p was equal to e r negative q minus the maturity minus the time step negative d over u minus d okay and then the uh, when we were discounting back using uh, recursing back through the tree it was e negative r by the time step and then we had uh, if you like the value of p times fu plus one minus p fd okay so in this instance this is quite different in that we derive this relationship for the backward recursion and okay which would have been the same as before but here instead of e e to the power of r negative q minus d over u minus d we have one instead okay so where we have a binomial based on the futures uh, the, the biggest change here is in terms of the risk neutral probability we have one minus d over u minus d for the risk neutral probability otherwise the backward recursion formula that we use is the same okay so um if we were to posit our previous uh, set of figures here as a question right in terms of uh, define uh, the futures price given given us 30 that the magnitude of u was equal to 33 divided by 30 and the magnitude of d was 28 divided by 30 and r was equal to 0 0.06 and the time period was equal to mon one month then the values we would have for our, our parameters would be u is equal to 1.1 d would be equal to 0 0.9333 in other words 28 divided by 30 and 33 divided by 30 would give us u 33 divided by 30 d was 28 divided by 30 r equal to six percent t equal to one over 12 one month fu the value of the option go the value of the futures price goes up the value of the option would have been call option would have been four if the value of the option went down sorry if the value of the futures went down then fd value of the option would be equal to zero 
Okay, so if we apply these figures P equal to 1 over 1 minus D, U minus D, same here, we get the same number here. 